Greetings one and all, it's Eric, your course manager here at UT OnRamps, coming to you today to talk a little bit more about Data Studio, and specifically to focus in on one of the analysis techniques that you may be asked to do in your project, which is cluster analysis. So if you follow along with our Pokemon example yesterday, this screen should look fairly familiar. Over on the right hand side, we have all of the different available fields that were present in that data set. I wanna point out one thing to you here that may become an issue if you import a data set into Google Data Studio. There are small icons that Google Data Studio places next to the different fields. You can see here, there's an ABC icon and there's also a one, two, three icon. Those represent dimensions and metrics. One of the issues here is that Google Data Studio has decided that some of the numbers that are in this data set, like attack and defense, should be treated as dimensions or names instead. We're going to need to fix that. And in order to do this, we can come over here to where our data source is, and we can click this pencil icon, and that'll allow us to go in and edit the types of fields that these are being treated as. So we can see here that almost everything here is being treated as text when the majority of these fields are numbers. So I can click here and change the type from text to number. And through the magic of time-lapse video, I'm gonna go ahead and change these all in a split second. Now I can just click this blue done button up here and I'll return to the Explorer window. With our data fixed, it's time to get creating. So we're gonna create a cluster analysis today. And in order to do that, we're gonna click this add a chart and the type that we'll be creating is a bubble chart. It's located under the scatter plot category. The plan here is that we want to graph out the attack and the defense of different types of Pokemon. So we're gonna convert the X axis and the Y axis into an average of attack and defense. Additionally, since this is a bubble graph, the bubbles can also be different sizes. And we're going to count up the numbers of Pokemon that exist within that type. So how many electric Pokemon, how many psychic, etc. And we're gonna base the size of the bubble based on the count of the type. So let's get editing this chart and see what we can create. Much like before, Data Studio is gonna default to whatever the first field is which in this case is the abilities. We're going to switch out abilities for type. I can either click on abilities and then reselect type to change it, or I can drag it from the fields column into the dimension window. Down here, you'll notice that there is space for a metric X and a metric Y. We are going to drag over our attack for the X axis and our defense for the Y. Now, when I drag over the X, you're gonna notice something that, again, there's an icon to the left. In this case, it says sum. That means it's taking all of the different attack powers and it's adding them together for a gigantic number. We don't want this. Instead, we want an average. So if we click this icon, it's gonna bring up this screen. From this screen, I can select average, and now it will give me the average attack of that type of Pokemon. I'm going to need to do the same thing for the defense on the Y axis. Go and just edit that and make sure that says average. And now my graph is practically complete. So now I'm able to mouse over these bubbles and it will display the information that's contained therein. For instance, in this bubble, we see that psychic type Pokemon have an average attack of 92.6, an average defense of 85.74, and that there are 53 different distinct Pokemon that are classified as psychic. If we wanna play the strongest Pokemon, then we want the type that's going to be the furthest to the right and the furthest up on the graph. So in this case, it looks like psychic is overall one of the best types to play. I like the data, but I don't like the look. So let's go into the style tab and change up how this actually is presented to the audience. The first thing here is that we can change the size of the bubbles. We can also set the color of the bubbles and we do that by clicking here and selecting color by type. If you've played Pokemon, you know that the coloring here is wrong by default. So if we click manage dimension colors, we can go in and we can manually edit how we want each type to look. So again, through the magic of fast motion video, I'm gonna go through and change all the colors of these Pokemon to better resemble what they are in the actual game. There's lots of other ways that we can customize our graph here. We can choose whether to display the axes. We can choose whether to reverse them or not. One of the elements that I definitely wanna update is the font, and I can do that here under this grid section. So I'm gonna update the font. I'm gonna update the font size so that it fits better within 
than the bubbles and it just is more presentable. I chose this font because it's kind of playful, just like the game. And the last thing that I'm gonna edit in here is the legend up top that shows what types of Pokemon are represented by which color. So here we have an almost finished product. In order to make a true cluster analysis, there's only one thing left to do. I need to draw in where I see clusters. To me, three major ones stand out. Here, these three up in the top, this big group in the middle here, and then this group down here, which would be considered the weakest of all. At this point, in order to draw these in, I would need to export the image, and then I can import it into Google Slides, into Photoshop, into any free photo editor, and I can manually then draw in where I see these clusters emerge. And there we have it. Cluster analysis using Google Data Studio and a Pokemon data set. I'm looking forward to bringing more data analysis workshop videos to you. And so as always, this has been Eric, your course manager, signing out. Until next time.